guys, welcome to The Awakening. Today is 66. Woo! 66. <laughs> actually, 66 is 99 back upside down. Nine, 99 is actually one of the most beautiful, powerful, completion, manifestation numbers. I was born on the 9th, and apparently that's a really good number. And 66 is actually unconditional love pure unconditional love so just so you know <laughs> so today I'm back in the garden and um, I'm going to do my best you can hear the wind I haven't got a microphone at the moment it's one thing I, I, I don't know why but I struggle when it comes to microphones so if anybody wants to help me with that explain to me how can I use a microphone out here in the garden I used to have this little food box that um, um, doesn't work anymore. Now I'm struggling because I was doing the tech founding with me. When we were in Edinburgh, it's like all over the country with it, with batteries. So now I'm not sure how to get another one. So if anyone's got one, they can give me for moving on TV a radio mic and explain to me how the hell does a radio mic work? outside i don't understand these things i can do shows i can create programs i can do lots of things but one thing i didn't understand how to do was how to have a child <laughs> another thing i don't understand how to do is how to wire up a mic so that you guys can get a better sound but it's so windy around here today so we're just gonna have to manage and i've got as close as possible as i can so today I want to talk about the wind is metaphysically, what is this? It's like all around me at the moment. Now, I teach what I heal, okay? So we've got, I've got the wind around me at the moment and I want to plant and I've got, these roots will not come out. I mean, they're so stubborn, they will not come out. And so I want to apply this to my teachings today. What is going on here? What is going on here with the specific types of roots that will not come out? Okay, so the biggest unhappiness of my life is that I miss my nieces so much. My sister and my nieces who live in Israel and there doesn't seem to be really, there's a little bit coming from my sister once a week. How are you? Um, a little bit of a connection. But my three nieces, nothing, absolutely nothing. And I wake up every morning with intense grief, okay? Intense grief. You may not believe that about me, because look at me. I go around, I do my life every single day. I carry on. But I'm carrying this and it doesn't matter how much I release it, particularly because of the way we're living, because of loneliness, because of not being able to see friends, uh, or friends are too stuck doing what they're doing and they've got their own lives, they've got their families and so they're too busy. So it's just me and, and Martin and the cats and my work, moving on TV. So when I'm talking to this, I feel like you're all there. And we're growing. It's so exciting to see the awakening getting nearly 300 views. I'm like, <laughs> I mean, I was getting two, and I've only been doing it for two months. Two months. As today is day 66, just over two months. So, what I'm saying to you is, if you have this intense, if you are lonely, we've done this before. Grief and you've been let down by family, and and you've got this intense grief. It's not. It's not going to go away just like that, you know? It's been four years now, and you know what? It's not getting any easier. It's not getting any easier. And yes, I get bouts of time when I don't feel it, when I get on with it, but today it feels heavy, intense. This wind that's blowing around me, it feels like it's trying to start crying on here but that's okay now if I burst out crying on here that's okay 
So I'm trying to say to you, I love you so much, all of you. I have never been paid a penny to do the work I do, not one penny. I do it from here because I love it when people become real. When you go out there and you do something similar to me and we join and we do it together, you become real. It's not that I, I'm asking people to sponsor us. I'm asking people to donate so that I can carry on the work because, you know, I just do it one day at a time and hope for the best. But the grief that I feel don't let anybody deny the real you, the real gut grief that you feel in your heart. Whether it's a loss of a child, a loss of a parent, a loss of a home, a loss of a job, the loss of the, the whole of humanity, the way it used to be, hopefully going towards the and, and these are big roots, these are roots that I can't get out. People look down on me. Friends, so-called friends. They don't like grief. Because somewhere along the line, they went to sleep around grief. They can't deal with it. And so they don't want you around. I've had people say to me, Oh, you were in so much grief. And all you did was cry and emote. Yeah, I'd lost my whole family had cut me off. I'd been in a wheelchair. My dad had died. I had no mum. I've got no kids, so you're telling me I don't have a right to grieve, yeah? So anyway, I grieved and grieved and I cried. I said, every time we saw you, you were crying, as if it's just something wrong with it. And then suddenly it's like, oh my God, you're so different. You're so incredible. You've really moved on. You're full of, you're different. And then the minute you start to feel your grief again, oh, you're going backwards, you're mentally ill. No. Do you know that doctors now will diagnose you with mental illness if somebody died in your family? That is not mental illness. That is grief. And in this country in particular, people hate it. They hate grief. Now I've got a few little beetroot plants that have died and already I'm attached so attachment's another thing but because I'm human I'm a human being as well as that spirit that intense incredible spirit that I got from my grandmother let me tell you about my grandmother she lost her young son at 20 years old he bent down to tie his shoelaces and died then my mother had to go and bring him back from England at 21, she was 21. Six months later, her, her husband died. My, my grandmother lost her son and her husband. Within six months. And all I knew was a very cold, very unloving, very uncaring woman. And the same, my mother was the same. Because she didn't face her grief. She, she hid behind the whinging and the complaining. I don't remember having connection with my grandmother at all, except when I was a tiny child. You know, I'm the opposite. So that's what my grandmother went through, right? Intense grief. And her spirit was so strong. She lived to be 86, I think. But she had a strong spirit, my grandmother, Baba, Baba, <laughs> Baba Bertha is kind of um, modeled a little bit on her, except without all the fun. All she did was whinge about everything and complain about everything. There was no love in her when I was a teenager growing up, nothing, nothing. Intense grief. Then my mother went through absolute hell with depression going to live in Israel, losing all her friends, like me. And then her friend, her best friend, our foster family, all came back. My mother just went to work, developed cancer, and her spirit kept her going. I, I don't know how she kept going. She had nothing and no one. There was nothing like this. 
And if you're a woman and you know what the menopause is, she had no support in those days. Nothing. And then there's my father. 92 years old, he writes his own life story, A Cat Has Nine Lives, gives it to me on a series of tapes. And then there's me. Unfortunately, I inherited a lot of the genetic rubbish, physically. But the spirit that I inherited, <laughs> it's going to take a lot. And they've tried. This world has tried to annihilate me, to stop me from working. I couldn't have children, wasn't able to conceive, wasn't allowed to adopt. I haven't worked. I've worked a tiny bit since I came out of the therapeutic community when I started to tour with my shows and talk about Medi um, Piaf and Maria Callas and talked about how to heal without medication. I would stand there and you could see me all over moving on theatre and say to people, look at me. I was diagnosed with this cloud cuckoo mental illness, borderline personality disorder, which I proved to you yesterday what it is. And the whole of my musical encounters will prove it to you. You've all got it. And I told people, you don't need medication. I went into a therapeutic community completely shocked by life and came out with pure inner peace. I'm in a book called Simply Amazing. So where is all of this leading? That today I'm telling you that my heart is heavy. That this root of attachment to my nieces who were like my children. I brought them up. When they were little, they would come over from Israel to stay with us for Christmas. And I used to love it, I used to buy them presents. And when I would go over there, they were like my kids. But when they got older, they started to feel that I wasn't like one of the family. I never felt like one of the family when they started to get older. And then things got really serious when Dad got sick and lots of misunderstandings and euthanasia of my father without even asking me and the whole family turned against me and cut me off. And that attachment doesn't go away. Everybody I know has got kids kids, nephews, nieces. If not, they've got family in their friends. The only family I have in a friend is in Scotland, miles away. And quite honestly, I don't feel energetic enough to go all the way to Scotland at the moment. So there you go. So what I'm trying to say is that the darkness and the light are mixed up a bit here. We're brought up to love those that were born to us, the blood family, the attachments. Buddhism tells me that we're all the same, we're all connected, we're all love. The people I know, a lot of them, let's say that, they do not project it. They don't. They don't project it. They're attached to their own, to themselves and their own. They don't project that Buddhism. I believe that I, I just want to love everyone. I particularly want to love those of you that feel like me today. You have every right to feel like this. Because we live in a world, if you don't have family, friends, connections that you you're brought up to believe that's how it's meant to be if you don't have that you're meant to, people tell you there's something wrong with you you're demented you're mentally ill all of those people that i knew with this mental illness were people that their families did not love them they didn't love them because they were different because they were indigos and Christians. Hurts. And what worries me 
is these attachments are so deep that it's just a case of getting on with your life. It's like these roots that may not come out yet. And it doesn't matter how much work, how much therapy you have, how much digging deep you may not get out of it. So I'm going to end there. I'm going to send you all the love in the world today and say, be yourself. Cry, scream. Sit with these attachments. You know, it's taken me back to past life, the Holocaust, where I lost my family in the Holocaust in the past life. It takes you all the way back, but it still may not go away. Be kind to yourself. Love yourself. And if you can't find people, as you say, families that love you, just try to understand that they were the vehicle. Your mum and dad brought you into this life. That family was the vehicle to carry you for a little while. Now you need to find yourself, find a job that you love as much as I love, moving on TV, where I can give and give and give you guys. I will never do anything to hurt any of you. I love you so much. I love you and I want you to wake up and to understand the truth. You have a right to kick and scream and cry. Find a safe place, run around screaming and crying. Feel your feelings, because if you feel your feelings, you're, going, you're not going to need as much medication, I'll tell you that now. And please check the packets. And you know where I am. Contact me at movingontv1 at gmail.com. I'm always there for you. Come and do your own programs. Live your life. Achieve your dreams. I'm going to get back to trying to get these roots out. And I'm going to cry today. I'm going to cry a lot about the innocence and all the children that are dying, have died, and about my own personal, personal demons that I may not be able to fix in this life. But if one of my nieces is watching this now, I'm so, miss them so much and love them so much. The past is gone. And I just want to be an aunt again. Surely we can find a way around it. At some point they will watch my programs. When I get bigger. Love you lots. Take care. Bye.